breaking news, Ontario Court freezes access to funds raised for protest convoy on Give, Send, Go platform. This order applies to the Freedom Convoy 2022 and the adopt a trucker campaign. So after the Ottawa Council admitted that they had the GoFundMe taken down, now they've taken the Give, Send, Go. The Canadian government has no grounds to tell us where we can put our money. Shalom. Kohlaimla. Yehoah. Bahashem, Yehosha, Bahashem, Rakab Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yehoah, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yehosha. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel. Throughout the four corners of the earth, salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled A Horrible Vision. So things are escalating, tensions are on the rise. Because things are heating up. So the citizens are growing more and more anti-government. And are speaking out against government authority. We as the men of the Lord have been telling you that things are going to get worse before they get better. The uproars of the people are not only going on in France, Spain, Italy, Germany, Australia, also Switzerland, Tokyo, New Zealand, Brazil. So this is a global uprising. And the world is seeing that they have been duped, deceived, and played over the last two years. No progress has been made. Many small business owners lost their businesses. Many people have not recovered from the major fiasco that have taken place over the last two years. There is a significant, de a significant distrust in the government. And the government responds with targeting its own citizens by labeling those that speak out against the mainstream as suspected domestic terrorists. So this place is a powder keg waiting to explode. Let's go into it. So I had a vision Wednesday morning, and really, it was a nightmare. In this vision, I saw people being hacked up by long machete knives. They were being hacked to pieces. And it dawned on me, ammunition costs money and is going to run out and become rare. It's expensive. So in this dream, women, men, children are being hacked to pieces by long machetes. Matter of fact, let's get this scripture. The dream was terrifying. Second Peter 15, verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. So these machetes look like 
swords. So I saw literal machetes, which appeared to be swords. Let's pull up a machete. Machete. So much goofy stuff on the internet. Here we go. So these are the tools that I saw in the dream. What makes matters worse, I saw people floating in the river that had been hacked to pieces, but they were still floating in the river. Streams of people, women, children, men, it didn't matter. And I remember going through a checkpoint <laughs> and um, they let me through. I was spared. So the Most High says, the issues of death belongs unto him. So look at these. This vision was extremely disturbing. Let's get that again. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hand. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power, rising up against government authority. That is what I saw. Total chaos. But the Most High is going to spare his Elect. Let's get Psalm 68 and 23. A book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 20. He that is our God is the power of salvation, and unto the Most High. The Lord belong the issues from death. See? So they allowed me to walk through a checkpoint that was that was manned by armed civilians with machetes in their hands and rifles, semi-automatic weapons. Let's go from there. I'm going to go to Job chapter 5. Let's go to verse. Let's go to verse 17. Behold, happy is the man whom the Most High correcteth. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. For he maketh sore and bindeth up. He woundeth and his hands make whole. So the Most High chastens those that he loves, the sons and daughters of Jacob. He wound, he heal, he put down, and he lifteth up. For he maketh sore and bind up. He wound and his hands make whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven. There shall no evil touch thee. So there is a spiritual hedge of protection around those that he loves. 
his elect. And a man of the Lord is going to be like a reservoir of water, a breath of fresh air, like the golden wedge of Ophir. Protection from the wind of destruction, from the winds of change. Or verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. So the seventh trump, the elect are going to be caught up into the chariots of the Lord. These are the escape vehicles. The Most High is going to make a way out of no way a highway and save his elect at the end of the sixth trumpet going into the seventh trumpet. Verse 20, in famine, in famine, he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Wait a minute, look at these images. From the what? From the power of the sword. From judgment. Instruments of death. So I was not touched. Protected. It was like a spiritual trance came over these men. And they said, oh, no, no. Don't touch him. Let him go. Let him go. That's what they said. That was amazing. Wow. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shall be hid from the scourges of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. Jacob's trouble. <clears throat> Out of fact, famine. Let's get that. Right here. Psalms 33, verse 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Wow. Job 5, verse 20. In famine, in famine, he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shall be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine, Verse 22, at destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth, for thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. Beasts are literal beasts and men. Mad men, judgment, the Most High is going to put at ease a spirit created for vengeance. What spirits? Let's get it. Sarat 39, verse 28. 
the book of Sirach, chapter 39, verse 29, or the verse 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their wrath and appease the wrath of him that made them fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. See? So the Most High is going to put the forces of the spirits of death, death angels, at bay when it comes to his elect of Israel. Job 5, verse 23. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt visit thy habitation and shall not sin. Well, the Most High has his eyes on his anointed ones. The Bible says that the angels of the Lord encamp around those that fear him. Job 5, verse 25. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great and thine offspring as the grass of the earth are going to prosper, multiply, and become fruitful and be called a blessed seed. Verse 26, thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age, like as a shot of corn like as a shuck of corn cometh in his season. Lo, this, we have searched it, so it is. Hear it, and know thou it for thy good. The Most High is going to preserve those that have been predestined, men, women, and children, the elderly, the youth, are going to be delivered. And at the last trump, be saved. Let's get one more. First Peter 1 and 13. Or we're going to come into some trying, dire times. This is not a time to make mirth, partying reveling, playing games. Judgment is going forth. So this is the year of turning up. Russia just made a decree that they're going to invade a Ukraine next week. First Peter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. Gird up your mind. This is a time to be spiritually rehearsed, spiritually prepped, mentally geared up. And that takes what? Wisdom. It takes instruction. It takes guidelines, which comes out of the instruction booklet, the Bible. We are mentally and spiritually being prepared, putting on the armor of light, this knowledge, this understanding, these wise teachings. Let's read that again. 
1 Peter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. So we've been reading out of Revelations to reveal, to unveil, or peel back of the times to come. Judgment, bloodshed, deliverance, the bitter with the sweet, salvation to the hopeful elect of the house of Israel, recompense and judgment to those of our adversaries. Let's close out with one more. And the two-thirds are going to be judged. Judgment starts with the house of Israel. Luke, Luke 1. Book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. His holy tabernacle is going to be preserved. Verse 70, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, have been in the past, is now, will forever be, teaching in the temple daily, teaching to the flock, the lambs of the Lord's elect. That's his temple. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. See? So I saw that in the vision, being preserved. These men literally put down their weapons and let me go through a checkpoint. And after I had literally watched some of these people get hacked up by these instruments of war. This is what I saw. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promise to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swear to our father Abraham that we, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. So our salvation is through our horn, which is Yahushai. He is our horn. Horn represents power. So all hell is going to break loose. The citizens no longer trust the government. And that growing dissension is getting worse. The people are being separated from the political leaders more and more with each and every passing day. A horrible vision. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahushai, Hashem, or Kakadash, Barakatham, and double honor to the elders 
and the apostles of great millstone. We got next, Lord willing. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Call me a Shirella. And abide, bye-bye. Shalom.